This is Richard Nikolai with FreeTheAnimal.com, and um, I've got on, I've got on with me Anthony Johnson, and um, he and I go way way back. And uh, in fact, I uh, uh, this would be the second interview I did one. Hell, yeah. it has to be ten years ago, something like that, eight years ago, something. Um, uh, Anthony is with the 21 convention, so I'm going to turn it over to him and let him give you a little background for those of you who don't know him. And we'll explain the hat, too, uh, when you see him. Um, so uh, uh, go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, Richard, it's good to be back on, man. I remember that interview you're talking about in 2011 before the Orlando convention that year, the Florida convention we had. And uh, I remember where I was and talking to you the first time. In fact, I remember because I think the day after or the next or the day before our, my house got robbed. It was the day before. Uh, we, okay, we, yeah, yeah, we, had yeah. to re, we had to reschedule a day. Yeah, 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 yeah. The rent cut rings a bell. Yeah, I had a shotgun. My, I had a shotgun stolen, a, a nice Mossberg 500 I had. My first shotgun. And then my roommate had a handgun stolen. He had like a Glock or something like that. See, so, yeah, it really sucked. But, uh, you know, no one got hurt or anything, which is pretty good. But yeah, that was, that was a hell of a long time ago. It was seven years ago. Yeah. I've, obviously, we've talked since then, but yeah, not on Skype like this. So, yeah. Um, so, who is Anthony Johnson and what does he do? Yeah. So I'm an entrepreneur, I suppose, but that was not on purpose. Mostly I'm a founder and CEO of my company that I started when I was 17, 21 Studios, formerly known as the Under 21 Convention and more commonly the 21 Convention main event that we do. That's a conference for men I've been hosting since I was, or building since I was 17. And the first one was held when I was 18 years old in Orlando, Florida. We've done that basically annually since then, or even more frequently sometimes by doing it in other locations, like in Texas you spoke at, in Florida where it was founded, all over Florida actually, Tampa, Miami, Orlando, and then also in Europe uh, three times, and Australia one time as well. And it's a, it's a conference for men that's hosted by men and built by men, but it's also very radical and controversial, as you know, it's very polarizing. I pursue the truth and make no apology for it, and the older I get, I think as you've noticed as a speaker, uh, the more tense that gets, and the less and less apology or any kind of hesitation there is for that. And well, since I've done that, the company's been really on fire, or focused on that more. That's really, that's cool. And of course, when I put this blog post up, I'll put all the, the, the necessary links up and where they can connect with you. Um, I, from my perspective, um, I, yeah, I spoke at, uh, I spoke 2011 in, um, mm -hmm. in Orlando and then yeah. 2012 in Austin. And then uh, last year, uh, or, or 2017, I guess in, uh, yeah. in, uh, in Orlando again and that was just a 10 year anniversary too yeah that was the 10 year anniversary that was quite a gig and, I, and yeah. just from my perspective it seems like you changed the business model over time um, where I where I guess you did a lot of it was very focused on video production I mean you're still doing the video production oh, yeah. of course, but oh, yeah. but it was uh, I guess with YouTube's model and, and whatnot it was uh, it was yeah quite a good deal for you and then that changed and so now it's it's folks I, I mean I was just blown away uh, this last yeah. time in Orlando with the uh, with the, actually the increased numbers of guests and yeah. I would I would also say the 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 quality or the focus of, of who these guys who attended the the the, uh, yeah. the conference were and I guess you even had more this year yeah we had about double so I know the 2017 event was the best event we'd ever done up to that point 2018 was twice the size, triple wow. the cameras, and it was, it was fucking epic. Like, I'm still recovering from that, not on a personal level, like, you know, catching up a little, I guess sleep that a little bit or whatever, but just like reorienting the company now. Because every time we do a major event like that, or really any main convention we do that has 21 in it, that's a big stepping stone for the company. And the company from that point forward is different. Not only in the obvious, like speakers now become alumni speakers like yourself at one point, the attendees become alumni attendees, and then we have all the content we filmed. We film yeah. everything, like you mentioned, with a professional film team, and I'm obsessive about that with as much as I can with the budget available. I'm not like Apple or something filming, you know, their events, but right. I focus very intensely with filming production, photography, all professionals, and I go the extra mile with editing it and all that stuff. Sometimes myself, usually other guys do it for me. Another thing too, though, the business model has changed over time uh, as the landscapes change, particularly with censorship and big tech now kicking people off platforms. We haven't been kicked off yet, but that risk is in my head every day. Mm -hmm. But this, as much as stuff has changed, some things haven't changed. Some important fundamentals, like the content is free and open to the world. I work very hard to do that, and I've been criticized for that over time and pushed away from that. And I push back and keep on track. 
So it's kind of like Ted for men minus the propaganda, all the fucking liberal bullshit with it. <laughs> all, the, all the feminist bullshit. But yeah. some, of the, some of the concepts are similar. The content is intended to be free in some way in a premium style too, not like the, not just specials. Like we do previews at first, like your talk. But in any day now, we're going to publish your 2017 talk as well, the full thing for free. Great. It's got ads on it, but it's free. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's perfect, perfect time because uh, Bitcoin is on sale, I guess. So, <laughs> so anyway, yeah. step back for just a second. So I, so I get your t-shirt oh, yeah. and hat. So yep. what a juxtaposition, the future is masculine and then the hat make women great again. Now I have a story to tell about the hat. So you're the originator of the hat. Yeah. Well, uh, not, uh, it was kind of a, a sort of a team effort, you know, uh, uh Megan Usui. And so yep. she, she wrote some little blurb on her, um, on her Facebook. And I, I took a little bit of quibbling with it and you know, there was a few things and then she wrote like a solid long paragraph more, uh, explaining more about it. And, uh, it was weird. I, I thought, man, that, that really makes a lot of sense. And I re re read it two or three times and this, this, that just popped into my head, make women great again. And yeah. I'm impulsive. So I got right on the computer and went to one of those things where you can make your own t-shirt or hat thing. Yeah, yeah. I typed that out and had them ship it to her. And then she puts up a post on her, on her Facebook, you know, with a picture of the, of the hat. It's it was a, the, the way I had the, the, the lettering uh, was yeah. a little bit different. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, people seem to like it. Um, oh, yeah. Noah, Noah Ravoy liked it and you liked it. Oh, and, yeah. and you messaged me and you said, you said, I think you thought I was producing them and you said, you know, Hey, can I buy some for a wholesale yeah, deal yeah, or yeah. something? I said, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. just, just go on and do what I did. And yeah. you ran, I, then all of a sudden I started seeing the photos come out of the last conference <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? This is great. <laughs> I actually quoted you in, in my keynote address. Great. Uh, yeah, I, th I saw that. I saw that picture too. But I thought, but yeah. you know, what I really, what I really took from it um, is, is, is that you know, sometimes you can get, you can have a business idea, you bust your ass for months and months, and nothing yeah. ever comes of it. You drop it, right? Yeah. And and um, uh, then you you have some sort of, you know, it wasn't like a serious thing it was kind of like a little trinket for her or something some sort of yeah. souvenir or whatever and uh, and you take it and run with it and not only that but yeah. you're absolutely the perfect person to do it because it's it's your same gig it's your same yeah. gig it's just 180 right kind of if you want to think of it that way but but also that uh, but also you've been doing this for what 11 years now and yeah and you have you have you have all of the all of the bells and whistles and gears in place it's just yeah. it's a function of different marketing really and a different audience um, yeah there was actually a point for me like it wasn't when i saw the hat with you i was very excited about the idea like the way you put it on the hat but it took about a week or two for me to for it to really digest and then one night maybe maybe five days before the convention it was like a sunday night before the convention this year I had so much shit going on, but it was like midnight. It was with my COO back in my house having a drink. And it kind of all clicked for me. It all came together. I had to design the hat differently to kind of mimic the uh, Make America Great Again style. Yeah. Uh, how to get one really sort of researching immediately how to buy, you know, at least 20 or 30 of them before the convention, like fast. Get them, uh -huh. get them made, get them printed, get them shipped overnight. Because the convention was a few days away. And I started integrating it into my speech. I'm like, how does this, this already fits with what I had in mind. I already have some slides in it that were relevant to this. And I knew more I wanted to put in it. And it all kind of came together for me one night. And then also I already had a convention plan, the 22 convention, but I was, in, I was keeping the powder dry on that. I didn't want to fire that off till 20, 2022. I wasn't in a rush. But the minute I had this hat, I saw the hat from you, then made my own version of it, put it into my speech. I was like, holy shit, now I have to launch that convention that I know you want to talk about here too. It's, and that's a, it's a big thing, yeah. Well, you know, and then I click into the website that you've already put up for it and everything, and, yep. and it's the mansplaining event of the century. I mean, that. Yep. What, where, how'd you come up with that slogan? <laughs> uh, it came from, we, had a, we have a guy that makes memes for us, for, for us, you know, to, to kind of celebrate what we do and kind of, kind of joke around with it for the web. 
And in 2017, if you remember, we did the Q&A panel, of course, for all the speakers. Right. And then he made like a fake CNN uh, news article. And they called, we called that convention the mansplaining event in the century. Because all the speakers on stage, like me and you and all the guys at the convention. And that was not, that was close to a mansplaining event. But we're speaking to men, so it's not really mansplaining. It's just kind of right. funny. <laughs> but I knew that if we, I was like, well, wait a second, we're going to do a convention now with all male speakers exclusively, 100% male speakers speaking basically just to women. You know, men can listen on the internet to it, but the, the event and the content is designed for women to consume. Mm -hmm. So I was like, holy shit, this, this is, these are all guys who are very criticized by anyone who is like main, normal, mainstream, not about normal, but mainstream, feminist, anything like center or center left is going to be very critical of this. It's a bunch of men talking to women about where they've gone wrong in Western culture and how they can improve and, and make their lives a lot better. And also young women who have not made those mistakes yet. What mistakes they can avoid in their 20s rather than fucking it all up and then crashing into the 30, 35, and 40 walls without a family and stuff. Well, it's, and, and doing something like this kind of undercuts the whole, you know, we're a bunch of misogynists. I mean, the whole reason yeah. for doing what you do with guys and yeah. have been doing with guys and now are going to do with women um, is because we love women, <laughs> right? That's right. That's right. And so you put a lot of effort into getting those relationships better. And, yeah. and, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of fault to go around. I mean, um, oh, yeah. don't you, don't you think that, so, you know, we see, we ju we just see the, the awful fucking shit with, um, with feminism, but in, yeah. but in some, but in some respect, it's understandable because you look around and you see so many douchebag dudes who just yeah. aren't, aren't men and aren't trying to be men. Really. We have a saying, sometimes we joke that women can't even do feminism without men. And <laughs> yeah. it, it's a play on the idea that uh, men have played a big role in feminism, enabling it, or at least sitting by passively watching it occur and doing little to nothing about it. And that's now accumulating over the over the gener the generations, and it's compounding. Mm -hmm. Each generation, I think, is more and more influenced by feminism. In my keynote speech this year, I even suggested that the modern religion of feminism, and if you look at a religion as a set of core beliefs that guide your life on a daily and long term basis, feminism dominates how women think today. Not only how they think, it's also what they believe, what they feel, what triggers them, and how they choose and live over a lifetime from 15 years old or younger, all the way through their 20s and 30s and 40s. And you see this through the, the memes and Instagram shit and social media shit and the big life stuff, whether it's divorce, getting knocked up as a single mother you know, in your 20s or teens or something, all kinds of screwy behavior that's really bad for your life and makes you miserable. And then men have the same effects too, but men are doing something about it. We're already making men great again. That's why it wasn't a thing. And that's being done by the millions with the internet, with the manosphere, with the red pill community, even the pickup artist community takes a lot of heat, but they're at least teaching men how to interact with women successfully, how to approach them, how to start, how to start a fucking conversation, something simple like that. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a step. When you're, when you're a, you know, incel beta or whatever the fuck they want to make fun of these guys as, at least the PUA community and its status and what it does, it helps guys get out of the house, talk to women, meet women, start conversations, mm -hmm. and build social skills that they didn't fucking social and sexual skills that they did not get at a younger age probably because of feminism at least that was a big influence in high right. school and stuff like that. And the, so, so the, um, the, you know, and with the women now in particular, they have all these tools at their disposal, Instagram and Snapchat or, you know, what all yeah. this, and then the dating apps, which are, which are yeah. all kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the hot chick gets a, a hundred or a thousand likes yeah. a day and a guy even if he's pretty reasonable might maybe get one every few days or something like that you know where he oh, yeah. where he gets initiated by the by the female they don't have to they can just sit there and yep. and thump. Yeah, online dating is heavily slanted to women all all range because because men have a wide range of interest in women you know if you take a tent if you take a hundred guys every one of those guys likes uh, a certain type of women you know they have their own preferences across the groups and stuff but for every woman, there's a dude who likes her. And look at porn as an example of that. There's all kinds of niche porn for midgets, fat women, really fat women, tall women, skinny women. I mean, big breasts, small and flat as a board. So our range of interest in women with dating is really, really wide. With women, it's the opposite. 
They like the top 20%, really the top 10%. That's what they gun for and fight for. And if, you're, if you don't fit that stereotype uh, with physique, personality, character traits, money, status, they will exclude you very fast, especially in a culture that enables that kind of uh, super hardcore uh, cutthroat, unrealistic expectations that these women have. Mm -hmm. women, evolved, women are evolved creatures like us. They've, they've wanted the same things for thousands of years. But it's only with the advent of really of feminism and especially the hyper modern shit, this really crazy shit now where they throw, you know, the presumption of innocence out the window and shit like that. Yeah. The pink, hats, the pink pussy hats. Yeah. That, that kind of shit is really toxic because it makes women make bad choices over a lifetime that are unrealistic and they will not be fulfilled. And then the, and the end result, of course, is the, is the stereotype of the lonely cat lady drinking herself to death. Uh, they have no husband, no children, no family. They have no friends almost. They watch Sex in the City all night. And if you look at the stats on it, there's actually reports that women in their 50s, the alcoholism in them is rising, to the, is skyrocketing today. I'm not, I'm not surprised. And you're probably going to see that dip into women in their 40s and eventually the 30s, 20 years from now, as the generations kind of get older. It's fucked up. Really bad. Yeah. So who is your target audience for this uh, new venture? Uh, in terms of, of, of women that you want to get a, get a ticket and fly out to Orlando. Yeah. Sit, so sit, in a room, sit in a room to be talked to yeah. by a bunch of men. <laughs> I actually have women already hitting me up, trying to buy tickets, DMing me, private messaging me on Facebook and, tw and Twitter and stuff, a couple. That's and the tickets, aren't, the tickets are not on sale yet. We just have like a VIP list building. We're yeah. not going to launch tickets for months at this point at soonest because the event's uh, 18 months out from right now. It's okay. in spring 2020. Oh, the spring of 20. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, election year too. I figure that'd be nice. A nice, uh, nice uh, co-branding with what's going yeah. on that year. Polarizing. Yeah. Well, I got to, I got to say too, that, um, that uh, it's, it's been, uh, as I've gotten more, you know, my gigs at your conference wasn't about relationships. It was about diet and then it was about social stuff and yeah. then cryptocurrency. So I'm kind yeah. of like different. Uh, in that respect, but I, yeah. you know, I've heard enough presentations to get kind of a, a, a gist of it, I suppose. And I, well, all the conventions, it's a good point because all the conventions we do, I said the 21 conventions is conference for men by men, but it's very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. There's core focuses, you know, 80% of it's like diet, fitness, and like relationships and dating and stuff. Mm -hmm. But 20%, I like to bring in speakers who can bring in outside perspectives on other topics. Cryptocurrency is a perfect example. You, you talked to me about speaking about that. I was like, do it. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. And people wouldn't expect that who are not really familiar with the convention. But for me, I was like, yeah, this is a comprehensive event. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are an important topic right now that a lot of our fans are interested in and rightfully so. Yeah. So I was like, fuck yeah. You and Jolly, I mean, Jolly was there in the audience, but exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you, you know, alumni speakers walking around talking about the content on stage or off stage. Yeah. The, um, as I've gotten more into interested in this, um, in this, the whole relationship thing, just because the, 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 you look out there and it's like being bombarded with, and then this Kavanaugh mm -hmm. thing. And I'm like, yeah. holy shit, there is work to do. But yeah. at the same time, I'm at the same time, I'm very encouraged because for years on my blog, you know, in the comment sections and, and then as well on Facebook, I would say I would say a good eighty percent of the chicks uh, have a have a pre, pretty much have their heads on straight, you know, about a lot of stuff, and especially about relationships. They make no bones about the fact that they like men, right? Yeah. They, like, they like they like ideal men. I'm not. I don't use the word real man or real men around. You. Man, man, conventionally men, you know, masculine yeah. men, old school right. masculine. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, that's where the salvation is. You know, uh, just another point on the whole dating apps thing. I was, I was doing an interview. I'm just, in fact, one, once I get done with this, I got to process that one and get it out. And then yours is going to be pretty, a fairly significant blog post. So that'll take a few days. But, um, but uh, so the, uh, I was talking with Noah Ravoy and he's like a, he's like a relationship uh, coach. Um, and, uh, he was, I asked him, you know, what are the things, what do you stay away from with women? And, uh, I, 
I think he listed three things, but the two that really stuck in my head are are are, are the are where you know they're they shoot off these kind of feminist little memes or oh, yeah. or whatever. But the big one is that they 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 criticize they criticize masculinity or males in general. They talk down yeah. to it, right? Uh, well, they've been brainwashed, really. Is yeah, what it yeah. Is. But and so then, so then I was. It got me to thinking that um, the why the dating apps are so folk, so ben, you know, focus female centric, and that is because a guy, you can you can within a few within just a, a few back and forths in chat or whatever, you can pretty much determine what her attitudes are about yeah. that stuff, and you can just you can. You know, I can do it faster than that. I can yeah, do it. Yeah, look yeah, years or just, a lot of times just yeah. from their profile. And yep. so, but, but the opposite isn't necessarily true because men have such wide interests and oh, also, yeah. also they, um, they interact with other people. And, and one thing that I, that Noah tells me that is very important for females is to observe their status amongst other men, right? Are they, yeah, how yeah. do they, how do they deal? How do they, de are they, are they like the little, are they like the, the minion in a pack or yeah. are they, or are they the alpha or are they the alpha's helpers basically? They're alpha, alpha dudes, but they're not the alpha in that group. Yeah. Right. I have a saying that masculinity, you have to grant it to yourself and it's something determined by the men around you and your tribe. Exactly. Uh, and women, and that, well, if you notice that what I exclude, it's that women don't determine your masculinity. You do, and then the men around you have an influence on it as well. Exactly. I think that's, and that's, a, that's what women should tune into. I agree with you. That's important for them to do that. And on social media, or, or not social media necessarily, well, that too, but these dating apps, they don't do that. No. In addition, in my opinion, women are horrible judges of, of uh, appearance. Uh, this is very consistent on uh, dating apps. So they have a very difficult time identifying guys that they would be physically attracted to without seeing them in person. Uh -huh. So they just don't, men are, I think women are pretty visual. I don't think, I don't believe, agree with the myth that women are not visual, but I do think that they're not good at judging what physicality they're attracted to and then converting that into an online persona or an online image, a flat, uh -huh. you know, image. So in person, they could pick up on really quick. They're going to notice the, they're going to listen to the way you talk, the depth of your voice, how you move your body, how you walk, how you uh, handle them. Even the most basic social interaction, you shake their hand, touch their shoulder or whatever the fuck's going on. They pick up on that stuff really fast and they tune into it for their arousal cues and what they, act, what they actually want. They mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Tinder and Bumble and all this shit, they have no idea. They go for the absolute top 1% guy. They all say they want guys over six foot. That's like 4% of the population or something. And these yeah. are women who are like, you know, 30 pounds overweight. Uh, they've accomplished nothing in their life. They have a lot of bad ideas. They're basically like a friendly five at best. And they mm -hmm. want guys with nines and tens. And it's, it's delusional and unrealistic. And it hurts them because of that. They have completely unrealistic expectations. And they have difficulty no matter what, even if they don't have that crap, like feminist crap, they have difficulty converting their physical, uh, what they desire physically into online stuff. And it's mm -hmm. very consistent I've found over the years with myself and my friends too and other guys. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why, you know, um, um, I was, I was starting to use them a little bit and I was like, I would get into these ridiculous chats and it's like, this is yeah. stupid. Right. And so oh, the, girl, the girl will be all over you in three, in 30 seconds in real life, but online she just can't convert the physicality of it into the conversation. Yeah. It, it's exclusive. I just go out and I talk to people, but, um, yep. And here's a here's a here's a, a thing I would say that I found is that if you if you like see that hot chick and you want to talk to her, then you know if you target, you know you better be in re real. What I do instead, really, is I have this rule. I I you know I'm I live pretty remote. Yeah, that's going to change here hopefully in a few months. But um, um. I just, I go out once a day. I, it's a rule. I have to go out, out and about and doesn't matter whether it's the grocery store or coffee shop or something. I just, if, 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 if you're near somebody, start talking to them. And I don't care if it's a, 
Uh, I don't care if it's a man or a woman, ugly, yeah. fat, beautiful, whatever. But if you just get in the habit of you can just you can just bang start talking to somebody, and not yeah. not about trivial stuff. It it's it's yeah. you know you 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 actually talk to hot chicks all the time. When you go yeah. to Starbucks, she's across, but it's in a different setting. She's across the counter, or, or yeah. it's the late, the girl at the cute girl at the supermarket checkout, or whatever. You have no problem yeah. with that. You're not like psyched out or 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 whatever. So if you just yeah. get into that habit of just talking to people, just go talk to people, right? Yep, I agree. Yeah, it's it's important to do, and it's that's a lot of that's really all it takes in a lot of cases to just pick up hot women, open your fucking mouth. Open your mouth, don't step on your dick. Or one of our speakers, <laughs> Ryan Stone, says, uh, be attractive and don't be unattractive. Right. Which basically, don't step on your dick. Yeah. But you got to open your mouth in the first place to talk. Women are usually not going to initiate conversation with you. It's pretty rare. Yeah. So if, they, if they do, they definitely want to fuck you. I mean, that's 100%. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. Okay, so um, anything else to cover, Anthony? Yeah, you mentioned something earlier I thought was pretty cool we could hit on is uh, gender relations. So the relations, the relationship uh, at large in America right now in the West between men and women overall, every age group, every demographic, every religious background, every political background, that's what I'm trying to focus on and heal with, in part. I mean, the, the 21 Convention, 21 Studios is positive media for men and destroying the feminist establishment. To me, that's what that does. That helps heal a culture. But the flip side of that coin, in part, is doing that for women too. So making positive media for women with the 22 convention, filming the shit out of it, and then you know, making it free and open to the world long term, getting mm -hmm. the content out there. So I'm trying to heal gender relations for both men and for women. And women right now have nothing really. They have very little, they have very sparse positive content for feminine, conventionally old school feminine women. Mm -hmm. Or to learn that kind of behavior. Feminism has dominated the media content space for women. If you're an 18 year old girl right now and you even have the initiative to want to learn about how to be a better woman and live life well in your 20s and 30s, there's very, very little content for you right now. It's very, uh, you know, decent. It's not only decentralized, it barely exists. There's a few books, a few videos, a few YouTube channels, but none of them are very big. And that's different from the manosphere, which is very big. That even includes guys like you to an extent who get involved with conventions like this. Right. And men can, look at, men can look at your blog and learn about life and how to live a better life in these different ways. Women don't have that, so I'm going to change that. That's what I'm doing with 22Con. Good. On top of that, um, what did I want to say with that too? Uh, gender relations, femina, destroying feminism. That's a fun one, right? Yeah. Oh, that's the thing too. You asked me about the, the target audience. That's what's going to head on too. Yeah. So I don't know exactly. I have an idea of who's going to attend by ticket. Because there's financials involved. The ticket starts the same price as 21 convention, $14.99 for that event. Uh, so there's that. And the price goes up from there if they buy later. That's the early bird ticket. $1,499. On top of that, they got to buy a flight. They got to buy a hotel. They got to buy Uber, parking, food, drinks. It's a three or it's probably going to be a four day convention. Minimum three days, but I might extend it to four for women. Mm. That's a long conference. That's five days out of your life. That's taking time off work. It's a big deal to attend the conference for the whole time. You know that having yeah. attended. So I think you will have mostly women at the event over 30, um, probably some mothers. We have plenty of fathers who come to the convention. Some bring their sons. We even had a, a grandfather and a, a grandmother attend the convention this year. The, the grandmother didn't attend the conference because she was in the hallway. She went and thanked actually one of our speakers for helping her grandson, uh, who was like almost suicidal over losing his girlfriend. His book wow. like you know, saved her son, her grandson. Cool. So I think we'll have a lot of women in the 30s and 40s at the event. Some in their 20s too, without a doubt. Uh, I doubt we'll have more than one or two or a couple in their te like late teens or something. They got to be over 18. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly is, you know, so we have the audience, the physical live audience. We think it's going to be huge. Minimum, we think 100 women and it could be over 500 for all we know. Some of our speakers think it'll be even bigger than the recent 21 convention, which had about 230, 25 at it. But my goal, my focus is not just to create content for women at that age demographic. That's fine. If they can make their lives better with it, fucking awesome. I want to help them do that. But my focus is Gen Z. It's young women today that are 14, 15, 16 years old that will soon be 18, 19, 20. And they have no content on YouTube right now or the internet to learn from. Yeah. Even if they want to, let's assume they do. Where the fuck do they go? Yeah. They got nothing. And like, you said, and like you said before, you know, if you, if you can, someone can certainly go and, and, and be part of the event and attend the conference. But, yeah. 
but but there's but you but your your ultimate goal is to get all of this info up on the up on YouTube. Uh, for free. Well, my ultimate goal is to change the course of a generation. Well, I, 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 yeah, I'm talking about getting the message out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. We read, this year alone, we reached 10 million men, uh, about 8 million on YouTube, and then a couple more million on other websites. Awesome. Platform. And yeah. I think with women, it'll be start, start small, but it'll pick up pretty steam pretty fast. This okay, is a very so, fuck you to feminism. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. So um, there's another thing that I wanted to ask. What is your what's your view or opinion uh, of the of the females who are involved in the loosely stated men's movement? Um, do you what do you what do you think of them and their influence? Uh, there's a few that I like. Eighty twenty. So there's a few. There's well, what is her name? Her name's kind of strange. Professor in Canada, Janice. Flamenco or something like that. Okay. She's a new one I've seen. I like her a lot. And there's another one, doc, Dr. Helen Smith, uh, author of, I think, Men on Strike. She's a good one too. Uh -huh. uh, outside of a few like that, those two and a few more like that, uh, that I can't name off the top of my head, but I could find yeah. them. I'm usually very skeptical and critical of women's involvement with influencing or speaking to men. Sometimes uh -huh. it's, it's usually a mixed message. And a lot of times they, like, for example, um, Prager U. They've done some content lately on masculinity, and that's a good example. I think they mean well. They're not trying to spew propaganda, but when they have women speak to men, they only get it like half right, and they end up doing more damage than they heal. Mm -hmm. For example, they try to tell men that you know masculinity is not toxic. We need more masculinity. Okay, mm -hmm. I agree with you. But then they run off the rails by they basically spin masculinity in men. They they want to build better betas, is what we call it. So they want betas to be more masculine, to be more helpful to women. It's all about women. Everything in the world revolves around women. Around women. Gynocentrism, mm -hmm. we call it. This is horrible for men. This is unhealthy on a personal and macro level for the culture. And that's where they run off the rails. And, and they don't give men, one of the main elements wrong with culture right now in the West for men and women in gender relations is women, men need the authority in a relationship. They have mm -hmm. to have it's not something women give men. It's something men have and possess in the first place. They have the power to do. They have, they, they yeah. need to develop the power to agency. Yes. In fact, uh, uh, you know, I talked to, uh, that was the subject of the talk with Noah the other day was agency. And yeah. it, it comes down to po your power to, to ask. Yes. And so you have to, you have to, to, to pick a, 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 a relationship or have relationships as a, yeah. as a man where you have agency to do man shit. Well, this, this is exactly the core issue though, is right now in, in the Western culture, especially in America, all the agency and responsibility and liability for everything as much as possible is dumped on men. Uh -huh. That used to come with authority. Now it doesn't. Now the authority is with women. So we right. get all the negatives, all the, all the, not even negatives necessarily, but all the liability, it's all the responsibility, the, it, none of the authority. It's the, and it's, any attempt to take it back is, is frowned upon and screamed at immediately by this crazy feminist and shit. It's then what I call, shit out young woman. It's what I call the cake and eat it too thing, you know. Oh yeah, I've seen you come, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They want, yeah. they, it's, it, it's, it's and, and, and it really mirrors uh, socialism where you want, where someone wants all of the, all of the, to put it in business terms, wants all of the profits, but bear none of the costs or the responsibility for getting oh. the done that make that generate the profits. I agree. I agree hundred percent. You hit the nail on the head. Yep. Yeah. So you converted oh, it business one, one more thing. So, so you, so we were talking about the, the, the women, you know, influencers in the, in the manosphere. Um, yeah. And, and you and you have a fairly low regard for women speaking to men on that. How about women yeah. speaking to women on it? I think women, I think it's actually important and it's not being done at all right now. But that's also, I say that in light at the same time as 22 convention is not designed for that. It's designed for men to speak to women. I do think though that women need to step the fuck up and speak to other women, especially young women that have been led astray uh -huh. I think, for example, millennials, their mothers, aunts, and grandmothers failed them miserably. Yep. They sold them out to feminism. They sold them out for birth control, all this free love bullshit that really hurt them in the long run. And millennial women in particular are really fucked. Most of them, I think, are not going to repair themselves fast enough, and they're going to hit, they're going to regret a lot of their choices in their 20s and 30s, riding the cock carousel, all this tender bullshit, fucking all these guys, and then trying to quick escape at the last minute and cash out like a casino. Mm-hmm. I do think women need to speak to young women. I think in, in 22 con, if we have any influence with that, 
because it's not designed exactly for that. It's designed for men to speak to women from our perspective. It should be a kickstart, a kick in the ass to light that fire and get women speaking up to young women and especially against like crazy ass feminists and shit. Yeah. Uh, I speak a lot. I use men to speak up against all this crazy feminist shit that's destroying culture and hurting it and hurting the future, the, endangering the future of this country, in my opinion. But, you know, we can't do all of it. Women need to step the fuck up too a lot. And they need to be a lot more assertive and aggressive within their own gender and push back against this stuff fucking hard. Not halfway, not most of the way, all the fucking way. All and the way. All the way. Yeah, no, no hold back, no holding back. And I, this, I think, will be a nice kickstarter for that and a nice uh, jumpstart, like a starting an engine up. Well, this is cool, Anthony. And I, um, I, when I saw that, I was so, I was really, I was, I was really like, wow, someone did something. You know, I really like, I really like action where you, and especially when you, you just know you can do it. You know, you like, you, yeah. you've got all your, you've got all the tooling in place. It's like, you're, yeah. it's like you have a car factory and you're just going to make a different model, you know? Yeah. Exactly uh, on the assembly line. So this is this is really super, and I'm I'm uh, overjoyed to uh, to promote it. And uh, we, I guess we have 18 months to do that uh, to, yeah. to to promote. So this will be a hey, kickoff in that direction. Whether or not you speak at it too, it's still a long ways off. I'd love for you to attend it as a VIP guest. Okay. And uh, you know, it's all male speakers first of all, but I'll be inviting a lot of people as VIPs to the event to experience it, especially alumni speakers, of course. Mm -hmm. You're going to attend speaker but even other women like christina hoff summers dr christina hoff summers is an example uh she's someone i'm i'm like half supportive of half critical she says a lot of shit that's like very gynocentric and not good but mm -hmm. she says some good things too. she criticizes feminism pretty well so she's someone i want to give like a vip pass to like a press pass and have her attend and see what we're doing and then we'll see if we can change her course with how she talks to men and women and stuff but i definitely want a lot of people there who are vips and uh, press pass and stuff like that you're almost pressed because you're a blogger with an audience too, but you yeah. also, of course, open three times. So, however we spin it, I'd, I'd love for you to be there, hundred percent. Great, I will plan for it, and um, but you have to wear the hat. I, I will. No, I'm gonna. Get, <laughs> I, I'm gonna get one though, because because I like uh, I like your uh, your um, design of it better than the one I just threw together in five minutes. Oh. I'll ship you one. Send me your address. You want a pink one, a blue one, a red one? What do you want? Yo, I, a pink one for sure. <laughs> no, I no the red. The, no, the the classic Donald Trump style. So yeah, what? we're actually working right now with the the company that makes their hats for Donald Trump for their campaign. We're gonna get those now, the official ones, with the exact same uh, style embroidery. Same company, exact same. Because this right. one's a little bit different than the Trump hat, but it's pretty close. Pretty close. So just, close enough. Yeah, close enough. Yeah, it's the. It's the message that counts. Okay. It's well, close. yeah, I will, I will, I will, uh, yeah. I'll shoot you my address and I will, um, uh, I'll be, I'll be in touch with you um, uh, a significant amount of time because I think uh, I, I kind of have, I feel like I have some, uh, some, some sort of skin in the game here, oh, yeah. uh, you know, um, for this thing. And I want to see it to do, I want to help uh, the, the most I can. And so Thank we'll, you. uh, We'll go from there. And uh, again, everyone look at the blog post for all the contact information for 21, for 22, and, um, mm -hmm. and Anthony's Facebook and all the stuff that he does. Uh, and it's a lot. So you can, you can lose yourself in content, free content if you want, you know. Yeah. And uh, so then we will get together again, Anthony. Thanks for uh, being with me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on.